get my Yolan burst. Hello, everybody. This is Aquataser, and welcome to my comprehensive guide, showcase, build, strategy guide overall for Hu Tao, one of my favorite characters, one of the more interesting characters to play, in my opinion. I do love me my hyper carries, and she is definitely one of my favorites. But it's kind of gloomy here in her signature area, so we'll be heading somewhere else. Now, this is a lot better. We will start off this section with my current Hu Tao build. As you can see, in this party with double Hydro, one Pyro, one Geo, I have 36,866 HP. Decent amount of attack, but that becomes from her being below 50% HP. Uh, about 1,000 defense doesn't really matter too much. 100 EM, exactly. And I'm sitting at about 70 crit rate, about 250 crit damage, um, which works perfectly well. Obviously, if you can push your stats a little bit higher, that's great. But you'll see later why I'm not able to go back higher than that. 113 energy recharge, not too important. If you're running a shield like Zhang Li, you really don't need uh, energy recharge to have your burst. Although it is nice for damage. 94.6 pirate damage. That's coming from Crimson Witch of Flames. Um, and I do have her triple crown. This is something recent. I had her at 10, 8, 7 for a very long time. But I decided recently to triple crown her because I was like, you know what? She deserves it. She does a ton of damage. And I do have her C1. And on top of that, I do have the Staff of Homa. Now, in terms of whale weapons, I would say Staff of Homa is probably one that most people would get. Even if you don't spend money, or if you're a Walken Battle Pass, Staff of Homa is just such a strong weapon. I feel like it is one of those weapons that uh, most people would be willing to get, and it's definitely worth it, especially for Hu Tao. Her damage potential with uh, Homa, and especially C1 as well, Homa C1, it's just ridiculous. So we'll go into my artifacts here. Obviously her best in slot is 4-piece Crimson Witch of Flames, but I can bring up uh, optimal stats to go for later. In terms of what I've got on her right now, I'm running this flower, uh, almost a perfect piece. I only think it could be better is energy recharge swapped out for EM, but very good stats. HP is useful. This piece is perfect. Obviously, HP percent could be defense instead of defense, but still very good. It's a 35 crit value piece with 40 EM. And here's where my build currently deviates a little bit. Uh, the reason why my build deviates, I'll go into later when I go into the teammates section. But right now, I'm running an HP Sands, 13.6 crit rate, very lucky rolls, and 61 EM. This piece is absolutely perfect. Only thing, once again, that could be optimized would be crit damage instead of flat HP. I have a very solid Pyro Goblet here. There's one dead roll into the HP, but that's not even a dead roll, because she does scale very heavily off HP. Uh, very solid. It's close to 40 crit value. This is by far my best Pyro Goblet. And I have this very, very high crit damage piece. Uh, at least for me. Very high crit damage piece on a crit rate circlet. And so with that, you can see I have about a 1.6 build on my Hu Tao. Four Piece Crimson Witch of Flames. I farmed this for a very long time. And yeah, that's about my Hu Tao build. So now we'll get into what I think is one of the more important sections, since I'm putting it at the beginning of the video, how to play Hu Tao. She has very high charge attack multipliers. And so with that, you always want to use her charge attack directly after using her E, which gives her a significant attack buff. Hu Tao is one of those characters that doesn't do damage based off her HP. Yelon is a character that does do that. Nilo is a character that does do that. As you can see, their damage comes off their max HP. Hu Tao does damage based off her attack, but her attack increase comes from her max HP. So with that, you're kind of a bit more flexible in terms of the weapons you can use, um, because she does do damage based off her attack. But max HP is extremely important because of the conversion. And it also makes her tankier, which is very nice. And the way that you optimally want to play Hu Tao, if you do a normal attack string, you'll do damage once you use her E, but her normal attack string is not optimal, not even close, because her charge attack multiplier is so ridiculously high. So, when you go to play Hu Tao, 
you're going to be using charge attacks. However, her standard charge attack is very slow. It has a weird charge up, just like every other non-infused charge attack in the game. However, when you use your E for I believe about 8 seconds, you'll enter a state where your charge attacks are a lot faster and they're infused with pyro. So, Hu Tao's optimal game plan is basically to just spam charge attacks when you're in her E state. And this kind of comes with a very restrictive game plan, but once you're in this state, you'll take away your HP and you can spam charge attacks. And sometimes you'll want to do two normal attacks into a charge attack. And that is all dependent on your teammates, so I will go into that later. The optimal way is to charge attack and jump after. If you're able to jump cancel out of her charge attack, you will still do the direct hit, although it'll make your damage extremely single target instead of being able to potentially go through enemies. You will be able to cancel out of your charge attack, and you will still hit the enemies. And if you have her C1, like I do, her C1 allows you to not consume stamina with her charge attacks, which is very significant because, as you can see through all of this, I have not been consuming stamina, but if I were to do this while I'm not in her B, you can see I use a lot of stamina by jump or uh, dash canceling and uh, using her charge attacks. If I were to do the same thing here, jump cancel, sorry, out of her charge attacks, you're going to use a lot less stamina than dash canceling, because dashing does use stamina, and I use a lot of that. Which means that with C1, she's actually able to do a pretty significant amount more damage, and your rotations are a lot um, more favorable, I guess you could say. Because if you're dashing while you're attacking with her, even if you're you're not healed anymore, even if your shield is gone, you're still going to be invulnerable for a decent amount of her attacks. Which means that if you're just jump canceling, which is what I did for a very long time, then you're going to be potentially getting hit. And you'll still be able to do a lot of damage. Like, you can see, I'm jump canceling right now, and I'm using no stamina because of how her uh, C1 works. And all that to say, jump cancel for every single person, unless you have C1. If you have C1, dash cancel out of recharge attacks. In terms of optimal stats for your Hu Tao, I would suggest, depending on your team comps, of course, just like anything at Genshin, I would suggest aiming for about 200 Elemental Mastery. And the reason for that is that every team comp you play through Tao in, you want to be getting her to Vaporize. Because the multiplier for Vaporize, I believe, is about... I want to say it's 50%, not double, um, on Vaporize with Pyro on Hydro, but it could be double. And Elemental Mastery will significantly increase the damage dealt by Vaporize and Melt. As well as... Here's a Witch of Flames being her best in slot set. Will also increase it by another 15%. Crit stats are very strong in Hu Tao. I believe she ascends with... <sighs> I think she ascends with crit damage? Yeah, she ascends with crit damage. So that's going to help you out. I believe it's about 36 crit damage that you get for free. Um, ER is not important on her unless you're really struggling to survive. Use a Pyro Damage Goblet, that should just be a given. You can run an HP Goblet, but it's not worth it. And I would always run an HP Sands or an EM Sands. I happen to have an extremely good Elemental Mastery Sands on set. And I typically use this instead of the HP Sands. However, once again, depending on teammates, you can use an HP Sands. And the optimal stats just overall for Hu Tao I would say aim for 200 EM first, then go for about 28 to 30k HP with resonances, with Hydro Resonance. Um, aim for about 28 to 30k HP, and after that just stack as much crit as possible. I would suggest crit rate, just get a crit rate as much as possible. Even if you have lower crit damage, it's better to be critting on her because she doesn't have a ton of attacks. You're probably going to be doing about 10, 11 charge attacks in rotation. So if you're not critting most of those, then you're kind of just suffering. In terms of Hu Tao's best weapons, I would definitely recommend going for a Staff of Homa. Obviously her best in slot weapon. HP percent increase is significant. Giving extra attack is of course significant because she does scale off attack. And you get extra attack whenever you're below 50%, as well as solid base attack 
and 66 crit damage. And what that essentially means is that you can run relatively low crit damage from your, like, this is not low crit damage, I'm just putting this out there, this is pretty high, but um, you can run lower crit damage, and just from her weapon, if you have Staff of Foma, you get 66, I believe 36 from her ascension, you're going to be at about 150 uh, crit damage with no artifacts. So you're gaining a significant amount of crit damage just from her weapon and ascensions. So yeah, Staff of Foma, best in slot weapon, it's significantly better than everything else. I don't have it, but the Staff of Scarlet Sands is actually a pretty solid weapon for Utel. I believe it's about 44% uh, crit rate, and crit rate is a great stat to go for on her. It also gives you a buff based off, I think, I think it's extra attack based off how much EM you have. And if you have a solid amount of EM on her, which you should, that's, like I said, you should aim for about 200 EM on your Hutao. If you have a solid amount of EM on her, Staff of Scarlet Sands is giving you crit rate and extra attack. Kind of similar to what Helm is giving you, just less of a buff. So I would say, from I haven't tried it, but I would say Staff of Scarlet Sands is her second best weapon. Um, however, this is under the assumption that you can get enough EM. If you can't get enough EM, if you don't have any of these weapons, any 5-star weapons, uh, Dragon's Bane is a very good weapon on her. If you can get it R5 just from the gacha, it's not too difficult, although even at R1 it's still solid. Uh, increases damage against opponents affected by Hydro or Pyro by 36%. Very significant damage buff. The base attack is a little bit low, but that's to be expected with 4-star weapons. And 201 EM, I think it's 221 at level 90. Very, very solid EM amount. You won't need to get anything else if you do have Dragon's Bane equipped. Which means, if you have Dragon's Bane on your Hutao, I would suggest running an HP% percent, uh, Sands. Another weapon that's really good for her, if you have it, Jade Spear is not actually as good as you may expect. I would definitely not recommend Jade Spear as much, and you can use it, but the low crit rate isn't super useful. I would suggest Deathmatch. It's a battle pass weapon, so if you're free to play, you will not have Deathmatch, but if you do have it, it gives you a pretty solid attack buff, as well as 36.8 crit rate at uh, level 90. And that crit rate, like I said before, is very useful. This is her best 4-star weapon, in my opinion, although I have not tested out the Ballad of the Fjords, the new Battle Pass weapon. This is a very interesting weapon, because I don't know if people have tested it that much, but it has crit rate substat, pretty decent base attack, and the actual effect of it is going to give you up to, I believe, 240 EM at Refinement Rank 5. Um, if you're running three different elemental types in your party, which for most of your Tau teams, we'll get to this later, you should be. So, I think this could honestly be her best weapon. I think this could be her best weapon. Um, for four stars especially, but I would say this weapon's probably also better than Jade Spear. It's better than Scoured Spine, whatever other five star weapons you have. Maybe besides Staff of Scarlet Sands. But this might honestly be better still. Uh, just giving you that EM kind of gives you the freedom to run HP Sands. And if you're able to get EM as well as an HP Sands, you're, you're going to be set. So I haven't done testing. I don't know if anybody honestly has. Um, just in the future, this could be her best 4-star weapon and probably third best, second best weapon for her. Besides Staff of Poma, of course. Staff of Poma just gives too significant of, a, of an increase. Other than that, I wouldn't recommend any weapons. I would just go Dragon's Bane, uh, Poma first, then Scarlet Sands, probably. Staff of Scarlet Sands. Then Ballad of Fjords, Deathmatch, Dragon's Bane. Dragon's Bane's really only useful if you don't have uh, enough EM from her Sands or Substats or outside sources, like we'll talk about later. If you're desperate, if you just get Hu Tao, run White Tassel. It's a free weapon. You get it from chests and leeway. It gives you a crit rate substat. And the normal attack damage buff doesn't matter because you charge attack with her. But if you're in the trenches, you need a weapon for her. White Tassel is usable. In terms of Hu Tao's constellations, her C1 is one of the best power spikes in the game. Um, especially in terms of just... Uh, 
being a C1 most of the time. You have to go for later constellations to get a big power spike for your characters. C1 doesn't seem like it might be that significant of an increase, but not having to jump cancel just means you do more damage because dash canceling is faster, as well as making it so you can do more attacks during your rotations by not consuming stamina. And it makes it more flexible as well. I have used C0 Hutao for a very long time, and I can tell a difference from C0 to C1. C2 is not useful. Um, definitely would not go for this constellation. It's not worth it. Increases damage, sure. Blood Blossom comes from her um, charge attacks when you're in the E state. Uh, what, what's the state called? Paramita Papilio. Um, this is just not a useful constellation. Her E, the level gap, or the level gain, I guess I could say, on her E and burst is not super useful. Like going from level 10 to 13 will not be that insane. So I personally would not recommend going for C3 or C5 unless you just really want to optimize your Hu Tao, you really like her. And at that point, go for it. I respect it. I like Hu Tao a lot. I will never go for these, but I got her C1, I got her Homo. Uh, C4. C4 is pretty solid. Um, it's not really that, so I guess I should preface this by saying that she already has something like this. Her passive, uh, her A1 talent, I guess I should say A2 maybe, um, when her E state ends, either by you switching out or just the timer running out, uh, your entire party, besides her, have their print rate increased by 12% for 8 seconds. And this is basically the exact same thing. Except it comes, once again, doesn't buff your Hutao, which sucks. It buffs your party's crit rate by another 12% for 15 seconds upon her defeating an enemy affected by a Blood Blossom. And with this one, Blood Blossom comes from her burst as well, but realistically, not many enemies are going to be surviving her burst, so it's really not that useful of consolation. Would not recommend. Like I said before, C5 is not useful. Uh, level, sure. It's. Her, her C3 and C5 are basically for people who want to maximize, like fully maximize their Gutao's damage. It's not useful. Her C6 is very interesting. When she drops below 25% health, or she's going to die from a lethal strike, she will gain a bunch of resistances for 200% for 10 seconds, and she'll gain 100% crit rate. So, it's a very interesting... Um, constellation. It's not worth going for. I definitely give it like a one and a half out of five stars. But once again, if you really want to maximize your Hutao's damage, you can run this uh, C6, just have her C6, and build her no crit rate, full crit damage, full offensive stats, and you will gain, um, you'll gain 100% crit rate. So you'll always be critting even, and you can stack up to 300 plus crit damage and just do a ton of damage, but it's not worth going for. It can only affect, uh, or take effect every 60 seconds. So overall, her C1 is definitely worth going for. Everything else I would honestly not recommend for anybody, unless you're a full whale and you really want to buff your Hu Tao. Hu Tao's teammates. Her best partner in Prime is going to be Xing Cho. Xing Cho, at C6 especially, has the best Hydra application of the game. He also gives her defensive utility. Um, you don't typically want to pair healers with Hu Tao, and Xing Cho does heal, but it's just very insignificant, all things considered. So I would definitely not recommend uh, using a healer with her. But what Xing Cho does do is that he gives... Uh, I don't remember where it's at. I don't... Is it just his talent? Is it here? Yes, okay. So his E and his burst both give damage reduction. And that damage reduction is very significant actually, especially for Hu Tao. Uh, if you don't have a super strong shield, even if you don't just run a shield in general, uh, this damage reduction and resistance to interruption uh, increase is going to be very significant for her. And Xing Cho is already just one of the best units in the game, but if you pair him with Hu Tao, he enables her to basically bait every charge attack, because her charge attack doesn't have an ICD for an internal cooldown. Um, that's some advanced stuff, but 
Attacks typically have internal cooldowns, and there may be specific to attacks. Hu Tao's charge attack is one of the only ones that does not have an internal cooldown, which means that every charge attack you do, if the opponent is affected with Hydro from the Zing Cho burst or the Zing Cho E, it will always vaporize, and it will do insane damage. And I will show you guys later the uh, damage increase from this. Zing Cho is her best friend, best partner in crime. It's kind of funny because they're actually friends in the war too. They uh, have rap battles, they spit bars at each other, and they are great friends in the war. And it's funny that in game as well, they are actually like best friends. <laughs> um, besides Zing Cho, you can obviously run Yelon. Yelon is essentially Zing Cho, and she does some stuff better, does other stuff worse, but overall, just extra hydro application. Typically, you will run and run Hu Tao with two hydro units. You can get away with just one. Zing Cho applies enough Hydro to allow her to vape um, consistently on every charge attack, even with just him. But if you're applying a bunch more Hydro, you're essentially just going to not have to worry about that Hydro being taken off the enemies, and which means that Hu Tao will always be able to vape. Um, Yelan and Zing Cho go together like peanut butter and jelly, which I can't have because of logic to peanuts. <laughs> but, um, they are just a great partners for Hu Tao. The optimal team comp, in my opinion, will be Xing Cho, Yolan, Zhang Li, and Hu Tao. And the reason why you want Zhang Li is that he gives you a shield as well as 20%, I believe, um, enemy resistance reduction. Where is it? Uh, yeah, right here. Elemental resistance reduction of your opponents by 20%. So while he's giving you a giant shield as well, which prevents your Hutao from taking damage that may kill her because she does decrease her own HP, you're also decreasing the enemy's resistance to both uh, Hydro, if you're running Gyalon Zingcho or other characters, and your Hutao, you're reducing their resistance to all elements with Zhongli. As well as the fact that Zhongli can run not Skyward Spine, you can run Favonius Lance. And Favonius Lance will essentially allow you to batter your other characters that may need energy. Just like Yelon may need energy, you need to run a certain amount on her to get her burst back. John Lee will also alleviate that. So he is essentially the ultimate partner uh, for a lot of characters in terms of defensive options, but especially Hu Tao as well. I'm insane and I'll tell you guys about that later. Um, but Zhang Li, Yelan, Zing Cho, Hu Tao is by far the best team comps. By far the best team comp. In terms of alternative options you can have, instead of these three characters with your Hu Tao, you can always run Mona. Mona is not the best alternative because she doesn't apply enough Hydro to really allow you to vape constantly. But if you use Mona with Zing Cho, you will have enough Hydro. And the thing about Mona is that she gives such a significant damage buff. She gives 60% damage buff uh, to your characters that are attacking an enemy affected by the omen. Uh, that's at first level 10, obviously. But 60% damage bonus is very significant. As well as the fact that you can run her on maybe with Sith, but realistically, you'd probably want to run her on Favonius. And you can run Favonius Codex on your Mona. This will help her keep her burst up. Uh, by allowing you to have extra energy recharge on the weapon, as well as allowing her to crit and give your characters uh, more energy as well. So, Mona, great character. I used her with Hutao for a very long time. Uh, you can also, if you really wanted to, you could run Thrilling Tails on your Mona as well. Just give your uh, Hutao an extra 40% um, attack, but it's really up to you. She's kind of a flexible character. And I would always run her on Emblem of Severed Fate. I would always say the same for Yelon as well. Emblem of Severed Fate. John Lee. I would go Tenacity the Millilit, but of course I have the wrong artifact on him because I switch things around. Tenacity the Millilit on your John Lee. It gives you extra shield strength by 30% and increased attack of all your party members every time your uh, skill hits. Xing Cho also should run. Uh, I have him on the wrong artifacts once again. But you should also run Emblem of Severed Fate on your Zing Cho. Makes sense to me. Um, other alternatives you could go for instead of Mona. 
Tokumi is not worth running, but you can do it if you're really desperate. Sucrose is actually a really good alternative uh, for Zhongli if you have enough defensive utility. Sucrose has the ability to give you extra elemental mastery. So if you stack a ton of elemental mastery on your Sucrose, then you are able to get 20% of her elemental mastery for your entire party, as well as every time she triggers a swirl reaction uh, of the element, then they will gain another 50 elements of mastery on top of being able to run Ruin Tails, other weapons, catalysts, uh, very good support catalysts. And on top of that, you can run Viridescent Venom, which is one of the best sets in the game. Increases scroll damage, doesn't really matter. But it decreases the opponent's elemental res, the element infused in the swirl by 40% for 10 seconds. Which means you're going to gain 40%, not 40% extra damage because of multipliers and calculations. But Yuru Tao will be hitting enemies that have 40% uh, pyro res decrease. As well as, if you're running John Lee, an extra 20% on top of that. So Sucrose, definitely one of the best partners of Yuru Tao. However, the issue with running Sucrose is that you're not really able to swirl Pyro super well. Because of Hu Tao's fusion, when you use her E, you can apply Pyro to the enemies. But, once you swap out of her, this, this state ends. So you can't swap back out to Sucrose, swirl, and then swap back into Hu Tao. Which means that, typically, if you're going to run Sucrose with Hu Tao, you also want to run Bennett. Bennett is one of the weirdest characters because he doesn't heal above, I believe, 70% HP. Yeah, he doesn't heal above 70% HP. So he can work with Hu Tao. It's not ideal, but it does work. But he gives such a significant attack buff, and he can apply external pyro for your Sucrose to swirl. Then you can switch into your Hu Tao and have that pyro was decrease. So if you're going to run Sucrose, run Bennett as well. And then run Zingcho. I would go Sucrose, Bennett, Zingcho, Hu Tao, if you're going to run those characters. Um, the crazy thing about Hu Tao is that she actually doesn't need the Iridescent Venerer to do a lot of damage, which is unlike some other characters. She does such crazy damage just because Vaporize is a crazy broken reaction that you actually don't need to scroll Pyro with Iridescent to make her do a lot of damage. In terms of stats to aim for for your teammates, Zhongli doesn't really matter. You'll get energy recharge from the slants. Yelon, it really depends. If you have her C1 like I do, it really doesn't... It's not as necessary, but I would aim for about 200 recharge with Yelon without C1. If you do have C1, you can go for about 140 to 150. Just enough to make sure you have your burst up on rotation. Zingcho, you will almost always want to run Sacrificial or Fibonius Sword on your Zingcho. And this means that you're going to be getting a lot of energy recharge just from your weapon, which is very nice. And just based off that, you can probably hit about 200 energy recharge. Uh, he ascends with attack percent, which is unfortunate, but you can pretty easily hit 200 energy recharge. That's at 100% fine. That's all you need for him. Um, he's basically there. He does damage, but he's basically there just to uh, support your Hutao vapes. Um, Hutao, we've already talked about her. And so, in terms of that, um, actually, one more thing I should mention is that you can run Nilo. <laughs> this is where my team comps come into play because I'm crazy and I've got a lot of stuff. You can run Nilo with Hu Tao. I actually do. I think it's very fun. And this is one of the rare times where you can sit at about uh, 100 EM. That's what I have on this HP percent sands. And because... Key of Kajma Suit, specifically, is such a crazy weapon. It's very good for Nilo teams, it's obviously the best in slot. But, if you're going to run her with Utao, you can stack HP on your Nilo. Like, I have about 74,704, that's with a level 80 weapon, not level, not level 90. You can stack HP on her, and because of the effect of her E, or sorry, using her E three times, and laying it on the opponent, you will give your party 0.2% of the equipping character's max HP for 20 seconds. Which means you're going to be giving, I believe it's about 140 EM to your whole party. And it doesn't, it, when you put it like that, it's kind of crazy. Because you can run an HP% Hu Tao 
and you'll still hit about I'm hitting about 250 EM now because of this external uh, external buff. And if you're lucky like me and you have LG at the end, LG for the end, you're giving your team another 100 EM. So it's kind of crazy. But if you have the right external buffs, like Supros, stuff like that, where you're giving a lot of EM, you can actually run HP percent, and it'll be optimal. Because with this team comp, I'm going to be hitting about 340-something EM with an HP sins on my Hu Tao. Which means I'm going to be doing insane, insane damage. And it's not that hard to land, either. So, all this to say, if you have the right team comp, the right external buffs, and this is all stuff that needs to... Um, you just need to look at your account and figure out what you can do, what you want to do, I guess. Um, HP percent is actually better than Elemental Mastery. But for the majority of people, I would definitely say Elemental Mastery Sands is better on the tower. In terms of talents that are worth leveling, Hu Tao, you should definitely level Normal Attack first, then Skill with the Burst. I would say Crown her Normal Attack if you really want to. You can go 10, 8, 6, something like that, and you're going to be chilling. Um, you don't need to go any higher than that, but I did because I really like her. In terms of your Zing Cho, I have him at 166. I don't want to level him up. I don't want to send him. Sure, he'd do more damage, but it's not necessary. Um, 166 is perfectly fine. He's basically just there to apply high barrel. Uh, Yellon. Yellon's a character that you don't have to level a normal attack. You can if you are to do more damage, it doesn't matter. Her E also doesn't need to be leveled. All it does is just do damage. Her burst is what you should level if you do use her. Uh, I have her at 1710. I'll probably level this eventually, just because I have her C1, which means I get two E's, but it doesn't matter. Zhang Li, you can go 181 on him. The uh, leveling his burst is nice because it's just like a big nuke, but it honestly doesn't matter at all. His E is what matters. You want that shield strength, you want that, um, what's it called? Yeah, shield base absorption. That's what you want on him. Um, other than that, Nilo doesn't matter. I have her double crown because Nilo's one of my favorite characters, but you can have her at 1-1-1 if you want to run her. Mona, all you need to level for Mona is her burst if you want to use her as a Hutao support. Uh, get that extra damage bonus, the home and duration increase, and get that big nuke. Um, Bennett, obviously I need to level this first. I still haven't leveled mine all the way because I don't care enough. Sucrose, you also do not need to level. All of her multipliers are just damage. It doesn't matter at all. You just need to stack her with the end. So now I will be doing a quote-unquote free-to-play damage showcase. I'm running Zhongli on Tenacity of the Millilith. With Favonius Lance, Zincho, Four Emblem, Sacrificial Sword, his stats are not super impressive. Mona, Favonius Codex, Emblem of Severed Fate. One of the things you can do for Mona is you can run Instructors, but Emblem of Severed Fate is just overall her best in slot. Instructors is not super useful unless you're uh, doing reactions with her, but you're not going to be in this team. And Hu Tao, I have her on Four Crimson. I'm running Deathmatch. If I had an R1 that I could, like, level and use, I would use it, but I can't. Um, so these are her stats with the Deathmatch. Uh, 226 EM, 27,000 HP, and this is, like, as free to play as I can get. I will also be jump cancelling. I will not be uh, dash cancelling. Once again, I've, I said this in my Ayaka video, I wish I could turn off constellations, but Genshin has not added it still, so... And this chamber is very bad for Hu Tao. I'm just gonna put that out there. This is one of the worst. Realistically, I should have chosen the HP percent, but I want this to be relatable. Just gonna set up everything. Take that. So I'm doing about 50k charge attacks, which is not too bad. I've got double Favonius weapons as well, which is nice. I can rotate again with my Zingcho. Catch these. EQ on Mona. Uh, 
jump cancel with my Hutao, pop the burst, and go for it again. It's also interesting because the Rift Hounds are one of the worst enemies to use shields against, so... Alright, we're through to the next enemies. And like I said, this is one of the worst chambers to do this against. Because you've got the Fire Elector, you've got the Rift Hounds. But, we're going to try and make it work. Pop this, heal back up with my Hutao. Pop this, pop this. Keep rotating. I'm going to switch to my Zingcho here. He might die, but... Like I said before, ideally you would not be using this team against... This guy just go away. Alright. So now I can just spam basic attacks with my Mona, and we are going to be able to break this shield. I'll just pop this, just to do it. There we go. So, obviously I was doing about 70k charge attacks on a Vaporize, and that was one of the worst chambers you can have for uh, a Hu Tao team. That chamber, you need a grouper essentially to be able to do anything. And even under those circumstances, and even with, you know, free to play weapon, or not free to play, but who well, unquote free to play, uh, deathmatch, you can do pretty solid damage, especially against enemies that are not grouped. Hu Tao is a very single target heavy uh, unit, and I was still able to clear that in fairly decent time. I don't think you'd be able to 36 star because of the lack of grouping but it's still possible. In terms of a whale damage showcase, let me make sure she's on the right. Cool. John Lee still on Favonius. I don't want to use anything else. Favonius is just so strong. We're not using LG for the end. We are using R2 Aqua Simulacra. 88 to 212. Perfect. I think she's built. All right. And now we're going full crazy uh, damage showcase. Although I'm actually curious, HP% percent in this team comp might actually be better because um, I'm not getting the Elegy EM buff, but I guess we'll find out. We'll go here. I can probably go Nilo first. Um, yeah, let's go Nilo first. I don't know what's optimal there, but I do want to make sure I get my on first back. And I'm going to pick the better option here, that max HP increase. And I'm just going to just go through it. Drop one, two. I'm doing about 80k charge attacks. So not that big of a significant increase in damage. So like I said, this also probably isn't ideal because I'm not running, um, what's it called, HP percent, and I'm also not below the 50% HP threshold. That's the other big issue here. I'm gonna drop her there, drop this, we'll drop a Nilo burst just for fun. Get that back up, get my Yolan burst. Up for burst, 273k damage, <laughs> and now we just kind of coast. And now I'm just gonna pop this just to break the shield, and there we go. So, once again, this chamber is bad for Hu Tao, but even a whale uh, Hu Tao isn't able to clear it super, super fast. And I'm obviously not the best player in the world, but I do know how to build my characters. And this team comp, absolutely crazy. Sharing the CM, sharing everything, very, very strong. Hu Tao, one of my overall favorite characters. I very much like using her, she's very fun. 
in the chambers where she's strong, such as like a single enemy, even like three enemies, like the triple Magni Kenki for the past Fire Olympuses, she's very, very strong. Uh, if you run a shielder with her, if you can properly manage her HP, she is one of the strongest single target characters in the game, even to this day. And I am curious to see if Focalores or Farina, whatever you want to call her, the Hydro Archon in the future, does have a way to permanently, or not permanently, but decrease HP over time. I could see Hutao becoming even better, to be honest, with this uh, Marashu, Marashas Hunter set. I don't know how to say that, but um, if her HP decrease can happen consistently, maybe because of the Hydro Archon or future character, you can get a ton of crit rate, and you can just stack crit damage on her, HP, Elemental Mastery. So I think Hutao has room to grow in the future, and with that being said, thank you for watching, everybody. I'll see you in the next one.